<clears throat> Good evening, class. Good evening, sir. Yeah, how are you? And uh, how's, work, how's work today? Fine, sir. And uh, how are you too, sir? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. And your family too, sir? Yeah, good. Everything good. Very good. Yeah. Um, we are going to start, and um, what we are going to start uh, with today is a uh, project management component. And from there, we'll look at, um, we'll pick one of the components and uh, we'll discuss it today and we'll continue with the other components. Uh, we'll proceed. I'm going to pull okay, my sir. slide for tonight's class. Um, yeah. I hope you can see my screen very well. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what we are, are looking at is a uh, project management components. Like if you come to um, project management as a module or as a course, we have so many components uh, that makes up this course, or so many modules that makes up this course. So, or, or so many major topics that makes up uh, the project management. And we are talking about the scope management, that's the scope of the project, and uh, stakeholder management, that's the stakeholders of the project. And we'll talk about the cost management. Talking about the cost budgeting of the project, now looking at uh, risk management. That's the risk involved in the project, and then change management. Change comes to project from time to time, so there is need for adequate um, change management. So if you are able to understand these five components of a uh, project management, then we are already a good project manager. For tonight, we are going to look at um, scope management. We are going to look at it in detail. So um, what is scope management? Scope management ensures that all processes and activities involved are well defined and the project deliverables and outputs are achieved to a high standard. It defines the sources of the project as well as the input and output needed to ensure success. It's very good to define the scope of a project at the beginning of every project. This is very, very important because if you do not understand the scope, then you can easily derail from what you are mean to deliver. But once you understand the scope, you'll be properly guided. So when you want to uh, move out of the scope, then you will come back because you understand the scope. It helps you to manage the project within the budget and within the timeline. But if you, know, if you do not understand the scope, you start you know, doing other things that you are not supposed to do. You can easily derail if you don't understand what you are doing very well. So scope creates boundary in project management. It creates the boundary. It tells you what to do and what not to do. That's the importance of scope. In project management, you must define the boundaries. And this is the scope. Things are you are you meant to do. And even if anybody wants to, to, to add more deliverables in things that are not within the scope, then you can authoritatively raise an alarm. Uh, this is not 
contained within the project school. That's the importance of school. So when you define the school, there is need to manage the school. You keep on managing the scope very well from the beginning to the end throughout the whole project life cycle. You keep on managing the scope. So now let's look at the processes of managing um, a scope in project management. Projects a scope management include the processes required to ensure that the project include all the work required and only the work required to complete the project successfully. Managing the scope is primarily concerned within the defining and controlling what is and what is not included in the project. So you have to uh, outline what is contained and what is not contained in the project. As a good project management manager, everything you do must be detailed. It must be written down. You can't just say, uh, this is the, what I think. It must be documented. The scope must be documented and uh, validated. It must be authorized, it must be signed. So if you are in a project and the scope is not defined, as a good project manager, you have to let the management or whoever you are working with to define the scope. And who defines the scope? The project uh, stakeholders, which is the, 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 the project sponsor, because he alone knows what he wants to achieve within that project. So he must define the scope. The project scope management process is in uh, um, number one. Plan scope management. The process of creating a scope management plan and document how the project and product uh, scope will be defined, uh, validated, and controlled. You have to plan how it's going to be created. And within that, it must be defined. The scope must be defined. Within planning the scope, it has to be validated. And after validating, it becomes a, a document, a working document uh, within the project. It doesn't end there. It must be controlled. Control means that continuously managed throughout the project. And how do you um, know the scope? You know the scope through um, collection of scope, data gathering. You need to have a, a session with the, the, the stakeholder, which is the, the sponsor of the project, in order to gather the, the, the scope. That is a requirement. Call it requirement or you call it data. Yeah, you need to do that. Collection of um, requirements. This is the process of determining, documenting, and managing a stakeholders' need and requirement to meet the project objectives. So you have to collect all the requirements. You have one, or as soon as you identify your stakeholders, you, have, you, you must have a one-on-one -on -one with the stakeholder through an interview. You ask the stakeholder what is contained in this uh, project and what is not contained. It must tell you what is contained and what is not contained, and it must be documented. Then define the scope. Defining the scope means describing the scope in details. If a stakeholder tell you that this is the scope, it must be it must be detailed. It must be detailed. It must give you a detailed description of what that scope mean. And it mustn't be ambiguous. It must be very simple and concise that everybody within that project uh, team must understand it, must use a language that is very simple to describe it. That's what it mean by defining the scope. 
Then after defining the scope, you have to create a work breakdown structure. Work breakdown structures is where you, 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 you uh, break down the scope into smaller uh, sub processes, subdivisions, start breaking the deliverables down, breaking the tasks down. So that will be easy to achieve the scope. That is um, what it means to create a work daily, uh, breakdown structure. It's an interim uh, project plan of the project. The process of dividing project deliverable and project scope into smaller or uh, manageable components. That's how it's described. So that is what breakdown structure. Within this, uh, within um, uh, this training, work breakdown structure is one of the assignments um, that I want my students to start with. I normally give them assignment to create a work breakdown structure. So that from there, that's how we start becoming technical in this uh, in this training. So after creating the work breakdown structure, then you have to validate um, the scope. What is scope validation? Scope validation means that it must be uh, formally um, authorized by the line manager or the stakeholder in charge, which is the, the project sponsor. The scope must be authorized, formally authorized, before you can start using it as a scope. And if it's not authorized, you must um, ask the, the, the line manager or the stakeholder in charge, uh, which is um, the project sponsor, to validate it. It must be validated. So it becomes a working document. Then the next thing is to control the scope. When the scope has been defined, validated, it becomes a document, but it doesn't end there. It's a continuous process. You continue to document it. If there is changes, uh, you, you state why the, the, the scope is changing and you keep baselining every aspect of the change within the scope. If it's budget changes, if it's timeline changes, if it's other deliverable, changes in other deliverable, it must be clearly stated why the scope is changing through change uh, requests management. It must be validated. Every, any change within the scope must be validated. And the impact assessment must be thoroughly reviewed with the team. That's how to control a project scope. If you don't know how to control it, you find out that stakeholders will come and um, keep on adding more deliverables, adding more, more things within your scope. And before you know it, it becomes too difficult for you to, to, to manage your project because it becomes too big. Too big because what you are managing now becomes bigger than your budget and it becomes bigger than your timeline. So that's why it's very important to know how to manage or uh, control your scope. So having said this, we are going to look into um, scope manage, uh, project scope management map. This map is a, a snapshot of how you, you, you manage your scope thoroughly gives you the, uh, if you have it, it, it will help you to know exactly what to do during managing your project scope. Every activity you need to undertake is, is captured here in this map. It's a very powerful document in project management. Let's look at it in details. From the scope, management, 
we look at things you need to do. And the first thing you need to do here, which is the input, is the project charter. You need to create a project charter. Project charter will help you to document your scope very well and manage your scope very well. If you, are, if, you are, if, you are, if you want to manage, if you want to be serious in managing your scope, the first thing you need to do is create a project charter. I will say something about the project charter at the beginning of this course. So the second thing is um, a project management plan. You need to create a good project management plan. The third thing is enterprise environment factors. You must identify all the environmental factors affecting uh, this project. Number four is organizational uh, process assets. Any organizational um, process that's going to be affecting the project, it must be stated. So these are the things, the input you, you need to make in order to create uh, these processes. And the tools and techniques you need to do that is expert judgment. You need to work with the uh, experts within the uh, this domain. What I mean expert means uh, subject matter expert. Who knows the domain very well? Who knows the project environment very well? Who knows the solution you are, you are, you are undertaking very well? So you need to deal with them. They need to make inputs. Then you need data analysis. Data analysis means that after generating, having a one-on-one -on -one with this um, expert um, subject matter expert, you need to analyze the data to know um, during the analysis, you create boundaries, you prioritize your project, um, your, 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 your requirement very well. And then you need a meeting. You need to, to have a good meeting, collaboration with the stakeholders in order to do this. These are the tools and techniques you need in order to uh, create a good uh, scoop uh, management. And what are the outputs? The outputs are scope management plan. After this, you will get a good scope management plan. Then requirement management plan. These are the two outputs you need after planning your scope management. Some of these are things we need to discuss in details as we uh, proceed in this uh, course. Then, after scope management, the next thing is to gather um, your requirements or collect your requirements. And we need to look at the input. The input here is the project charter. You can see, like when we are starting, I was making a mention of project charter, how important project charter is in a project management. As you can see it again, within every aspect of you can see project charter keep on appearing. So it's a very important document. The number two is project management plan. Number three is a project uh, document. Number four is business document. Five agreements, enterprise uh factor you need to gather you need to collect um requirements within all these um deliverables that i'm just mentioning like project charter you need to gather a a, a, a a data that to make up the project charter i will show a sample of project charter um as we proceed within today's course so that we see how a sample, a good a sample of a project, how a good project charter should look. And looking at the tools and techniques involved in this is expert uh, judgment, which is uh, the, the, the expert in domain 
somebody who have uh, authoritative knowledge about the project or the solution we are planning to, to deploy. Then you look at data gathering, uh, data analysis, decision making, data representation, inter interpersonal, interpersonal and uh, team skill, context diagram and prototype. And after all these uh, processes, you need to have some output. And the output here is requirement documentation, requirement traceability metrics. So these are how to um, collect your data. This, uh, when you are doing all these, you must be involving your, your, your business analyst at this point. Their business analyst must be involved. In this, um, mainly these are mainly duties of business analysts. You need to work together with your business analyst while doing this at this point. Because to, to, to gather to gather requirement and do requirement analysis and decision making, these are core functions of a business analyst, a requirement documentation and requirement traceability metrics. These are core functions of business analysts. So that's why business analysis in project management goes hand in hand. Then the third one here is to define the scope. Why defining the scope? You see the project charter you see here. Then this is the time you start defining this requirement that contained in the project charter that you've gathered, you need to define it, need to define or describe it in details. All everything that is contained in the project um, uh, project charter, because in, if you go to project charter, there is a section for scope management. There, everything that contained with that, within that scope must be thoroughly reviewed and uh, described so that everybody within that project team must understand everything very well. Then you need to then describe everything as it in the project plan. Project documents must be thoroughly defined. This is time you start defining everything within that project. If it's the solution you are, you are trying to deploy, this is time you start de defining the solution very well. That's time you start creating user stories and acceptance criteria within the project. But all these things are functions um, that will be undertaken by business analysts. But as a project manager, you are the one to manage all these things. You are the one to direct all these things. You are the one to make sure that they are doing things the way they are supposed to do it. You are the one to make sure that they follow all these processes. That's why you are a, a project manager. It not necessarily means that you are a project manager have to do all these things, but you have to direct it. When you are directing it, you are the one doing it already. So you look at the tools you use in um, project uh, uh, scope definition. Is expert judgment. We have we said that already. Data analysis, decision making, interpersonal and uh, team skill, and uh, product analysis. At the end of the definition of scope, you come out with project scope statement, which thoroughly defines the business uh, uh, statement, or the, 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 whatever the, the problem, the business, the business, or you are trying to achieve this is where the document that is going to be contained. Project scope statement is very, very important. We are going to look at some of uh, all these um, documents one after the other. Then the next thing is 
project documents update. So at this point, some of the projects, um, some of the documents you've um, gathered within this process have to be updated. If any point at every point in this project, you are adding new deliverables or keep breaking down the scope into smaller um, molecules, which is uh, user stories, acceptance criteria. Every other document must be updated. Then after that, the next thing is uh, you create work breakdown structure. Work breakdown structure is a detailed uh, project plan. You create this at the early stage. is a, a, a detailed project plan. This is where you you you, you break down all the project's uh, scope and then break it down into subdivisions. These are what we we discuss all these things already. So this is what you need to do. And to do that, the input is project management plan, project document, enterprise, uh, environmental factor, organizational process assets. And the tools required here is expert judgment and uh, decomposition. Decomposition means you have to divide, uh, uh, subdivide it into smaller, categories, which here is going to come in under, um, under user stories. I'm very sorry I'm using some of this um, uh, technical like user stories. Uh, these are some of the things we are going to meet in um, business analysis, but uh, I have to use it here. So user stories means smaller um, features of a software. Let's call it user stories. So when you must have created a good work breakdown structure, the next thing is uh, validating your scope. Validating your scope is when the, the, the stakeholders then have to authorize the, the scope, the requirements for you to start uh, working on the requirements. It must be validated. And to do that, we are looking at the input project management plan, project document, verified deliverables. At this point, all these deliverables must be verified. The, the, the stakeholders, like um, the project sponsor here, need to look at all these uh, deliverables and then make sure that Actually, these are the deliverables that uh, he or she imputes during data collection. And once it's validated, then you can start using it as a working document to achieve the project aims and objectives. And the output here is acceptance deliverable. Because it's now verified, it's now accepted, it's now acceptable, now accepted deliverable that can be worked on. Work performance information, change requests, project document updates. Work performance information are uh, you need to, to look at, we must have a performance index, key performance indicators that will show. Um, a success factor of every product, every, every deliverable, there must be a success factor, which is, we call it a um, definition of done. So, and to do that, you must create acceptance criteria in order to have a, a work performance information. Looking at making sure that every, every project, every deli deliverable is meeting the acceptance criteria. Then you have, at this point, you must have a change request plan. 
change request plan means if there is any change, if a, there is a stakeholder is now demanding for a change, then there must be uh, a change request form to be filled and processed before a change can take a place at this point. At this point, you cannot change anything within the uh, project deliverable without an authorized uh, change request um, document. This is uh, uh, what you need to do at this point, validated uh, to validate the project scope. In order to validate this, what you, uh, you need to achieve, the input and the output. Then, after all this is now to control the scope. As like as I said, the, the scope is a, is a continuous to, to, to use your scope is a continuous um, management. Keep on controlling and managing from the beginning to the end. Within the full project life cycle, the scope must be con um, controlled, updated, at any any action taken within the scope must be updated. If there's any, any changes coming up, it must be updated. This is because in projects, there is constant changes. Things changes, more especially if you are working within an agile environment, is allowed for, for a change to occur in a project within an agile environment. But the issue there is that it must be uh, thoroughly documented. It must be reviewed why this change is taking place. And to do that, we still need to work within the documents we are working on, like project management plan, project documents, uh, work performance data, organization process assets. And the tools here is uh, data analysis. And the output here is work performance information change request, project management plan update, and the project document update. So this is a thorough documentation of how to manage your scope. Your scope is your project. So if you know how to manage your scope very well, you already know how to manage your project very well. So that is, you see this uh, map contains everything you need to do in order to manage your project very well. It's very, very brief, but it's very powerful. It details everything you need to know about thorough managing of your project. When you manage your scope very well, you already manage your project very well because you've covered everything you need to do within that project. That is scope. That's why we do scope at the beginning. You have a thorough scope plan, then you have a successful project uh, delivery. Yeah, I've said a, a, a lot, and at this point, I would like to ask question before we proceed. Do we have any question at this moment? Okay, I'll carry on. Now we need to look at um, project scope and project charter. We've said so much about project scope and the project charter. And uh, at this point, I want us to gradually uh, coming to the understanding of project charter very well, because uh, project scope is managed within project charter. So we we'll look at uh, a defined project scope, project charter overview, project charter sample, and the uh, project uh, scope. A statement.
How do we define project scope? Define project scope is the process of developing a detailed description of the project and the products. The key benefit of the process is that it describes the pro product service or result or result boundaries and their acceptance criteria. So when you de de define the project scope, you should be able to define the products, the, the solution or the software you are, you are working on, the services you are, you are, you are trying to, act, uh, to develop. This is where you define it in details. And then here you, you define the boundaries and then create acceptance criteria, which is a benchmark for a benchmark for success. It must reach this standard. This is a standard, standard for success. This is what you, 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 you do within, uh, uh, when we are defining a project scope. And to do that, you need to look into these two um, project, uh, uh, these two documents, project scope and the uh, project, uh, project charter and project scope statement. In project charter, you define the, the project purpose. Then the measurable project objectives and the related success criteria. Then you define the high level requirements, high level project description, boundaries and key deliverables. These are the things that are contained, should be contained in, within the project charter. Then you define the overall project risk. Then you summarize the milestone within the projects. Then you pre-approve financial resources. Then here you need to list the key stakeholders. Then project approval requirements. These are of what constitutes success, who decide the project or, or, or what is successful, whether the project is successful or not, who sign off on the project. You must define all these things. There should be somebody who is responsible um, to decide what, whether a deliverable is successful or not. That's why in project management, every action you take, somebody must validate it. Any deliverable, any input, any document you are generating or producing, producing somebody must validate it. And during validation is to review it, to make sure that it meets the acceptance, accepted, uh, acceptance criteria, which is the standard for, for sources. Then, you need to define the project exit criteria. Exit criteria means what are the conditions to be met in order to close or to cancel a project. If a project is successfully coming to an end, what are the criteria? What are the exit criteria? If the project is meant to be canceled because some projects at times, maybe see the project is no longer valid or is no longer is out of fashion or is obsolete, it can be canceled. Or if you see that the project becomes a failure in order to reduce the loss, a project can be canceled. So what are the exit criteria? It must be defined within the project charter. Then assign projects manager, 
responsi responsibility and the authority level. Here you must have defined who is the project manager. Responsibilities and the authority level must be defined within the project charter. The names and the um, authority of the sponsor or the persons, the person or persons authorizing the project charter. All this must be stated within the project charter. That's why project charter is very, very powerful. Then let's look at the uh, project scope statement. They are the same thing, but they are a bit different. Uh, project scope statement and project charter, the difference here is that project charter is all about everything about the project. It contains, summarizes everything about the project, including the project scope. But the project scope here summarizes every deliverable acceptance criteria within the project. So these are the two things, these are the, 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 the different. So a project charter is a, is a bigger document. The project scope statement is a document within the project charter. So um, we are going to um look at the project charter again a very powerful document and we continue to review it so looking at project charter again let's say um project charter overview the project charter is a one-page document that summarizes the fundamental information of a project before it begins. It clarifies the project objectives and scope and addresses the need of the stakeholders and define the rules and the responsibilities of the project team. Project charter is critical for obtaining leadership support and commitment to provide the necessary funding and resources. Once signed, it authorizes the project leader, which is the project manager, to formally start the project and use the necessary resources. Project charter includes a problem statement, goal statement, scopes, and boundaries business impacts, project team, and project time, uh, timeline. Project charter should provide answer to the following questions. What must be done in these projects? Why doing these projects? What are the benefits of the project? When must uh, this project uh, be done? What are the time limits, the time duration? It must be stated. And who is involved in this project? This is the basic answers that the project charter must provide in order to un understand project charter very well. Okay. At this point, we've said so much about project charter, we need to look at the, uh, look at the project charter a sample of project charter, and this is how it looks. It's one page document, but it's very powerful. Looking at it here, you see, um, here is the problem statement. You need to state the problems very well at this uh, space. State the problem, why this project is going on the problem this project is trying to solve. Then here is goal statement. The goal, meaning that after solving this problem, you are going to achieve this goal. Then you look at the project leader. 
you must take the, the leaders of these projects, the project, um, the project uh, sponsor, the, 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 the project manager, or every leaders in this project, you must take it here. Then project approach, you must take the approach you are going to adopt in order to solve this problem, in order to achieve this problem. If you are using agile approach, you must state it here. So over the time, you cannot state that if it's authorized that you are going to use agile methodology. For you to come and say, oh, I prefer using um, waterfall, no way. If you are going to change from agile methodology to waterfall, you must state a reason once this uh, document has been uh, authorized. So when planning your projects, using project charter you have to state the 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 methodology you are going to use if it's agile methodology you state it here if you see sigma or is seedling or waterfall it must be stated and you are not going to change unless you prepare a change request form then here you must all the project team you already know that is starting this project with you you must state them here, the project team. Like here, I've got um, all of you here within this project. Every of us must be stated here. And our role, like some of us are going to be a project manager. For instance, say Lovett, you write Lovett here, project manager. I feel like, for instance, uh, Donald here, I uh, say Donald here, business analyst. That's how we are going to be stated. Everybody's role must be, everybody must be stated their name and their role here. Then if you have um, support personnel, like a project support officer, like a PMO, this is where we are going, because these are support personnel, a PMO, Project management officer, just like we discussed, we this, uh, discussed them already. They are going to come here as a project support. If you stay the name, you stay the role. Like uh, Dimitier, you write uh, PMO. Then here is the scoop we have been talking about. This is where we capture the scoop of this project. Here is the scoop. All the scope uh, deliverable scope management we're talking about, you must capture the scopes here. Then the deliverables here, what needs to be done in this project, the one that is already known, must be captured here. And then here, start date, you must capture the dates the, this project is starting. And then estimated completion date. So, you must know the beginning and the end. So if, if there is changes that this project cannot be completed within four months, we agreed, then we must know a reason why this project is moving beyond four months. If, you, if your project is going beyond your timeline without a genuine reason, then you are a failure in that project. Then here we have to capture the milestones, you must know what is a milestone within your project, you must be stated. So that when you reach a milestone, you know that yeah, there is a success. Like if it's um, your project, you can create your project into four um, stages. Like if you're looking at our, um, our template, our uh our this our um, our work breakdown structure will be using as our framework within our project life cycle we have four stages like initiate stage then we have um define stage and we have um execute stage and we have closure stage so each of these stage, like the fine stage, must have 
a milestone so that at the end of the fine stage, when you get to this point, you know, yes, this is uh, a milestone. For instance, you can say that uh, in um, the fine stage, once you draft your business case, got it validated, it's a milestone. So this is how you create your milestone. To know milestone will, will make you, um, we show the, the, the way you have been uh, the success in the in the project because you cannot be successful uh, without reaching a milestone. Every milestone is a, a success uh, stage that should be celebrated uh, within a project. So that's why it's important to create a milestone so that when you reach your milestone, you and your team will know that you guys are actually progressing and uh, achieving uh, something within the project. So that's why it's important to create a milestone. And when you create the milestone, you must de describe what your milestone is, what it really is, not just the state um, business case. You must say, how is it a milestone? How are, what, why is it a milestone? What have you achieved? that makes it a milestone. And when you create milestone, you must state the dates. You must state a date where within the project plan, where you are expecting to reach a milestone. If at this point, if at that date, and you, are not, you have not reached that milestone, is an indicator, these are some of the indicators showing you that you are not doing well. If you are missing your milestone dates, then you are not performing. These are some of the indicators. Then signatures, here is the authorized authorization, approval signatures, who authorizes this project. This is uh, the project leader, which is uh, the project and be the project manager. That is where, and then the sponsor. Once the sponsor, the, all of them authorize, uh, append their signature here, and the date means that um, this project has been authorized for you to um, kickstart the project and start uh, making expenditures. <coughs> so that is how a project charter is. As you can see, that project charter con contains almost contains everything within the project. So I I will expect um, you to have um, to ask a question at this point. If you have any question um, to ask, I'll be ready to take your questions. Yeah, even if you don't all have a question, I want to hear uh, from me to make sure that um, uh, you guys are following. Hello. Hello good evening. Yeah. Hi, Donald. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. The class, um, I think, is really we are, we are delving into it to the best of my knowledge. It's really getting intense. I guess um, for me, I'm I'm doing as much as I can to assimilate and possibly replay back the recorded um, session okay. able to get more and more into it. Really, so it's for me. I'm new into this, so asking question at this stage might. Be, I still be very, um, how would I put it now? I still be a bit early, uh, but okay. Okay. just following through. Okay, thank you for your input. You know, I like when we are, when I like a bit of collaboration so that you know that uh, um, we are being followed. Yeah. Okay, I will then carry on. Thank you for that review. Then we've um, uh, looked at the 
the project scope, uh, project charter in details. So it, I think it's time for us to, to look at the uh, project scope statement. Just like I said earlier, that the project charter is a, is a, is a wider document and project um, uh, scope statement is a document within project charter. So the project <clears throat> scope statement is the description of the project scope, major deliverables, assumptions, and the constraints. The project scope statement documents the entire scope, including project scope and the product scope. Now, you can see here I said project scope and product scope. Project scope is the entire project. When you are starting the project, you must have a scope. You must have other things you need to before you get to the product. For instance, if you are trying to implement a software, maybe for instance, your company is having a customer support, um, customer management issue and they are looking at how to solve their customer's management problem your company is having. Then you are looking at then the way you are doing things that is causing this problem. And at the end of the day, you get to a point where you start thinking of a solution to solve that problem. Maybe adopting one CRM solution or the other. So, but before you get to that product, which is uh, uh, that solution, the project is, has already started. So that's why the project scope is different from product scope. Product scope is still within a, a, a scope within the project scope. So that's why if you see project scope and product scope, so that you, be, you, won't, you won't be confused within the two um, terminologies. So, Product scope is a, small, a scope within the project, but it's now we are talking about the solution. We have, de we have um, decided that this is the solution we are going to implement to solve this project, to solve this problem. And then we have chosen a particular solution, which is now the product we are implementing. But before we get that, the project have already started because Somebody has been doing the requirement gathering. Somebody has been doing requirement analysis before we get to, to know the, the solution we are going to use. So that's why you have to define the project scope and product scope. So project scope statements include the product uh, scope description, um, progressively elaborate the characteristics of the product service or results described in the project charter and the requirement documentation. Then deliverables. Any unique and verifiable product result or capability to perform a service that is required to be produced, to be produced, to complete a process, a phase, or a project. That is a deliverable. Is a verifiable result coming out from a tax you under are taking within that project. So any task you are taking within that project must produce a deliverable. That's why. Most of the time you see tax and deliverable. So deliverable is a result coming out from every tax you, 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 you take within that project. And it must be stated that this is the desired result. It's to, to put it in a, in a, in a very single, um, in a very single uh, word, it's called is a result of every tax. 
and the result must be stated clearly stated so that you know what you are trying to achieve it must have every de deliverable must have a acceptance accept, acceptance criteria attached to it to know that this our deliverable yes this is our deliver it it, it it meets our standard and this is the task we are doing for instance we are doing um uh stakeholder management or stakeholder analysis if you are doing stakeholder analysis which is a task then you must have a deliverable at the end of the day you have a a, a, a stakeholder management document so you have a state management document which is the the document you you realize from doing your stakeholder analysis so the stakeholder analysis is a tax and the stakeholder um analysis document is the deliverable it must be stated then acceptance criteria so acceptance criteria just like i said is the standard of every deliverable you must have every deliverable or every task or every activity must have an acceptor, acceptance criteria that is a benchmark for success any any deliverable that doesn't meet this um acceptance criteria cannot be accepted in a project so if you are creating user story, that's why every user story have an acceptance criteria. Every user, we, we, we will go into user story later. Sorry, I'm, it's just coming in my mouth. I'm using, but in a user story, you must have an acceptance criteria. You are coming into user story as an acceptance criteria very well. But these are uh, mainly, um, business analyst um, terminologies but uh, project managers they need to know about it because they are the people directing all these deliverables then project exclusions identify what is excluded from the project explicitly stating what is out of scope for the project helps managers, stakeholders, expectation and can reduce the scope creep. So at this point, when you have stated all the deliverables, acceptance criteria, then you must state what is out of scope. This is the time you create boundaries that when you get this place, no way. This is the boundary for this project. For instance, what is not um, acceptable in this project can be we have a budget of ten thousand pounds to de to deploy this software and ten thousand pounds no more no less anything outside ten thousand is not authorized this is a boundary and this project because of this social so reason this project cannot exceed six months so you have created a boundary that within the budget it can't exceed 10,000 pounds. Within the, the timeline, it can't exceed uh, six months. This is a clear boundary. So, and anybody within this project, once you've seen that this is clear boundary, you know that is a clear boundary. And if you are moving out of this uh, boundary, you are falling into scope creep. And you know about it. So you can't say you don't know that this is the boundary when you are falling into scope creep. So what is scope creep? Scope creep is when you creep out of your bound, scope boundary. When you fall out of your scope boundary, it's called scope creep. We're going to look at scope creep uh, within this project as well. Then scope uh, prioritization. When you have um, identified your scope, then you must um, prioritize your scope so that you know which one you are starting with. 
you, when you have all your deliverables, your requirements, everything stated that this is what I'm going to do. Uh, you are going to do A, B, C, D. Yes, you are going to do all of them. Yes, it's accepted. You know, you need to do all of them. But when are you doing it? Which one comes first? Why is it coming first? Why is, is there dependable? Is there the dependencies? Why this one must, is this one, must this one be uh, the um, requirement A happen before requirement A, uh, B happen? Is requirement uh, uh, B dependent on requirement uh, uh, A? Or all these, all these uh, scope, are all, all of them dependable on each other or are they independent uh, deliverables or uh, independent activities? You must state all of them, their dependencies. And again, you here is where you need to uh, state the most pressing need. Looking at the organizational, uh, because if you are delivering some uh, um, in some pro in some uh, projects, some certain things can be uh, pressing need to the organization. Let me say. If you are deploying uh, an e-commerce website where the, maybe the company is planning to start selling their product online, there are some certain things. If the company is waiting to start doing this immediately, there are some certain things you need to start doing, like ability for customers to to log in and make payments, show, um, search for products. These are the immediate things that customers need to do. You know, some other things like uh, having um, two payment gateway, uh, different payment, you can just have one pay important payment gateway. You can have like three payment gateway, but the major ones need to be done so that customers can immediately start doing something. So you need to prioritize your, your, your deliverables or your requirements according to their importance. So to do that, we use a Moscow analysis. Using Moscow analysis, Moscow analysis will tell you more what must <clears throat> what must be done. In this project, cannot uh, what must what must be done. The project cannot do without this particular requirement. And these are some of the things you need to start with. Then we have things that should be done or should have. Then the project must have over a long time or a long run. It's good to have, but over a long time, this can be so. You must arrange it in the order of uh, importance. Then could have. You look at some of the things that um, it could it could um, project could have it, but even if you, uh, the, the 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 project don't have it, it's not a big deal. Then still you need to 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 point out some of the things that is a no-go area that won't have. These are some of the boundaries. Again, you must bring some of these boundaries, uh, things that the, 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 the project must not have. So this is how you use, uh, we call it Moscow. This is how you use Moscow analysis to prioritize your, your requirement or your scope. During interview, these are some of the things that will come out. They will the, 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 the interviewer will ask you, um, how do you prioritize your requirement or how do you prioritize your school? And this is when you start telling them how you prioritize it using mass call analysis. Most things must be, uh, some of the things must have, should um, have, could have, and won't have. So you need to prioritize it uh, this way in order to make your work easier. And then to make sure that you achieve the major thing before you start running out of your um, resources.
Then I uh, will have to look at uh, the project, um, the scope creep. Scope creep is very, very important to understand scope creep. What is scope creep? Scope creep in project management refers to changes, continuous or uncontrolled growth in a project scope at any point after the project begins. This can occur when the scope of a project is not properly defined, documented, or controlled. It is generally considered harmful. So that's why it is very important to manage your scope. Because if you don't manage your scope, if you don't plan your scope, you find that there are so many um, stakeholders they will always come and start telling you, uh, Charles, please, uh, can you capture this? Charles, please, can you capture this in this project? Because you don't have, you don't even know your scope. You don't even know what you are doing. So whatever they say is okay, sir. You know, because they are maybe higher uh, officers or higher uh, in authority in the office. Because you cannot say, sure, you don't have any authority to say no to them. But if your scope is uh, captured within project charter, if they come, Charles, can you capture this? Um, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, this is not within my project scope. But if you want it to be added, you know what to do. You fill the um, change management, uh, change request form, and then I will review it uh, with my team, and I will get back to you. So once they, 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 they've done the paperwork, and uh, it is authorized that you need to add more things on your scope. Then you capture it. But it, they, before you capture it, you analyze it with your team, stating the, the impact of that particular um, re more requirement they want you to capture. If the, if the impact is that you need to spend more resources, if you are spending 5,000 pounds, if the impact is that you need to add an additional 2,000 pounds, making it 7,000 pounds. You need to state it there. If it's the impact is that uh, this is a project of six, uh, project of six months, but if you add more requirements, this project is then going to last for eight months. Then you, add, you need to add the impact, which is two months extra. So if the management want the, the project to add to a project that's supposed to last for six months, to last for eight, to last uh, for eight months, then it's their, their business. But the main thing is that you get it properly documented. So this is how you manage your scope very well. But if you don't have project charter where, they are, where the, 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 the scope is uh, properly defined and documented and uh, validated, you won't have any document to back you that uh, you are not going to, to take order from a higher officer. That is going to amount to a subordination. So let's um, look at the causes of scope creep. Ambiguous or unrefined scope definition. Lack of any formal scope or requirement management inconsistent process for collection, for collecting um, product requirements, lack of sponsorship and uh, stakeholder involvement and lengthy projects. These are the major causes of um, scope creep. When the, the scope is uh, ambiguous, you know, is is it will always lead to that's why it's very good to use simple languages that everybody will understand and if any language that you don't understand, let it be thoroughly defined it must be defined so that everybody will understand what it means there is no i think you cannot think it must be i know this is it not i think uh, this is no I think is an ambiguous statement, but because what you are thinking might not be what is uh, required. It's not, uh, we're not talking about your thoughts. You are talking about 
what should be, what it should be, not what you are thinking. Then lack of uh, a formal scope uh, or requirement management. If there is no project plan, is that it? There's no formal scope uh, management plan. Inconsistent process um, for collecting of a product requirement. You must have a defined way to collect a requirement. If you have, for instance, if you, are, if you want to collect requirement, you are collecting the requirement through survey, and then you are still collecting requirement through, um, uh, through a workshop, through an interview. When the requirements you collected through survey and the requirements you collected through one-on-one -on -one, um, through one on one uh, interview you find out there's maybe there's discrepancies and this brings confusion so is you must define which methodology which techniques you need to use if you are using survey to or questionnaire to generate your requirement just use questionnaire if you want to use one on one interview Use one on one interview. Don't just use different methodologies. It's going to bring confusion. The lack of uh, sponsorship and the stakeholder involvement. When you're managing a project and uh, the project uh, sponsor is not uh, involved or the stakeholders are not involved, then who is telling you what to do? How do you know what you are doing? Yeah, they might have given you a project brief that this is what you need to do. But you need to gather requirements. You need to speak with them on one-on-one. -on -one. Document what they've said, that this is should, that what should be. And after documenting, let it be validated. That means their involvement. When you produce a project charter where the, the project sponsor authorizes, append his or her signature, that means uh, involvement. And that's how to uh, uh, manage a project. Then lengthy projects is one thing that is very sure to, uh, to enter in a, a scope creep. That's why it's very important to define project duration. And it should be very, very as uh, brief as possible. Because when it's too lengthy, over time, you might not even know what is going on in here. So it's very, very important that the project is straight to the point and you have a defined project duration, the beginning and the end before the project starts. It's very, very important. Then, how do we avoid this uh, dangerous um, and harmful scope creep? Number one, clear, well-managed scope is a key element to successful projects. Scope statements should include both features in and out of scope. Features in and out of scope means boundaries, what is in this within the scope and what is out of scope. Business analysts can contribute to clear scope with effective requirement elicitation. Yes, that's why I said that some of these things are <coughs> jobs of business analysts. But a project manager, you need to direct all this you need to direct when the a business analyst should start doing this that's why you are involved as a project manager and when business analysts finish doing it then business analysts must report report back to you so that's how you control it but to collect this requirement is the duty of the business analyst you work with the business analyst whatever business analyst does the business analyst must report to you but to do this Business analysts have more 
technical knowledge on how to uh, gather project uh, scope. The project manager should include a change management process in scope management plan. So you should include a change manage, a management process. Before you start your project, you must have a, docu a documented plan on how to manage your scope. Like you are expecting that um, a change must come. So you must have a plan. So when the change comes, it's not, going to, it's not going to be a surprise to you. You just pull your templates. Yeah, 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 your document is yeah, your plan is already a template on how to manage your, your changes. And you do that through a change request form. It contains change request form contains everything in order to manage a change or to make an input in an already going uh, project. Then establish and follow requirement process processes for scope modeling. We have a, um, a scope uh, management modeling that help you to to look at the input and output in order to get the desired um, result. And one of the documents or one of the techniques that will help you to, to do your input and output is a CPOC map. CPOC is a process, is a, is a technique, we'll come to that. It'll help you to, to define what uh, you need to, 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 to supply. it tell you the supplier, the input, like S here in this CPOC means the supplier. Then I here means the input. And then the P means the process. And O means the output. And C means the customer. So what they are telling you here, you are trying to solve a problem. Then what is the customer? Customer is having these challenges. This is what customer is demanding you people to do. And that is the customer. So everything you are doing now centering on customer. So then what is the input? What do you need to impute in order to achieve this customer's um, desire? That is I. And then S is the supplier. Who is supplying this input? Who is the, the, the professional that make this input? Who is the owner of this responsibility? And P is the process. What is the process? Which is the, the process mapping on doing? Which is the process? That is the P. So that is, uh, and the uh, O is the output. The output after the input that we uh, solve the problem. So you must um, know this uh, established uh, process for scope modeling, scope analysis, scope prioritization, traceability, and change management. You must have this um, model in place in order to avoid scope creep. Then sponsors should develop project charter to keep the ownership. Yeah, a, pro a project charter must be developed with a sponsor. So the sponsor must approve it. So when the sponsor, it might not be the sponsor that actually developed the project charter, it must be the business analyst must, or the project manager. But when the sponsor authorizes it, it means that the, the owner of that project charter is the sponsor because he authorizes it. If he didn't authorize the project charter, it's useless. But because the project charter has been authorized, the, his signature is appended then he, to, he owns the project charter. So that's why I mean the sponsor should develop a project charter to keep ownership of the project. Then you need to use uh, um, tools like RACI in order to manage 
uh, your project team and the uh, project responsibilities. RACI here means, uh, R means uh, responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed. So in RACI metrics, these some of the, <clears throat> some of the assignments I do give uh, my students. You must have to know how to do RACI metrics. I always tell them to, to do a RACI metrics, giving them a scenario. So, RACI metrics here is uh, responsible. You must know who is responsible for any deliverable, for any activity, any action, who is responsible, then who is accountable. Somebody who is accountable is uh, like a higher authority that uh, would authorize that particular or approve it. Uh, the person who is responsible is the actual person doing it doing that task, performing the task. But after performing the task, somebody must validate it. Somebody must authorize it or sign it. And who is assigning it? The person that is accountable. Then who is um, must be consulted? You need to, when doing it, because most of the time you must not have an expert knowledge in what you are doing. So you need to keep consulting. Who are those you need to consult? You need to consult the subject matter expert in that failed in order to tell you the best way the best approach and the um to to, to do it or to achieve it achieve that particular um deliverable and who must be informed you need to inform all the stakeholders every, every party that uh, should know about this uh, activity you are doing or uh, you are deliverable or that particular scoop you must inform all of them. They must have, if it's a document, very soon we'll, we'll start uh, using something like a, a management tool, like a base camp, where we used to manage project. In a, in a base camp, when you uh, upload any document, there are some people that must see that document and you give them access to see the document. When you give somebody access to see any document, you have informed, the person is informed so they can see it. They might not really make any input in that particular uh, deliverable or document, but they have access to that document. So that equally means informed. They have access to it. So that's how you use RACI metrics to manage rules and responsibilities. And this will help in making sure that uh, there is no scope creep because everybody understands what they are doing at any point in time and they know whom to consult, who is responsible and uh, uh, who should be consulted. Then you must educate sponsors to chunk projects into short or sub project and to focus on uh, type deliverables. For instance, if you have a deliverable that is too big, then you need to tell the, sp the sponsors as a professional business analyst. Your sponsor might not be a business analyst or your sponsor might not be a project manager. So at this point, as a project manager, while doing your project um, uh, breakdown structure, because your sponsor is not a professional, you must educate your sponsor that this particular deliverable must be broken down into sub uh, deliverable. At times, you can even tell them that some deliverables should be created as a separate project. You know, I've managed a project where um, I'm planning, to, I'm delivering a, a learning management system and the booking management system as one project, but it shouldn't be. These are two different projects. And I advise my, my, my sponsor, no, these are too big. Let us break, the, break it, uh, this project into two. Although you are planning to integrate these two products together, but after developing these pro, uh, two projects, as independent projects, 
you can then integrate two of them as the two of them can work together, but it cannot be one project because it's too big. So you can advise because you have this uh, expert knowledge as a professional, the best way to make sure that you achieve this aim within the time frame and budget without anybody struggling. So it's your duty to, to educate them on the best way to, to manage it. Like a big, a big, a, a big chunk should be split into smaller, smaller um, deliverable or sub projects or sub categories. These are the best way to make sure that um, your, pro, your, your project doesn't fall into a scope creep. So. Um, at this point, I think uh, we've covered what we uh, have for this night under scope management. And uh, if you have more questions, I'll be ready to take your questions. So any any question at this um, point? As um, I think uh, we've covered what we have for tonight, and um, if you have question, I will take your question. If you don't have question, then we we'll call it um, a night, and our process is and upload it to the course portal as usual so that we can go back there to review um, the course as usual. Okay, good evening once more. Good evening, sir, and good evening, yes. everyone. Okay, um, I would like to, part of what you said when you were talking about the um, scope creep was the fact that um, part of what could actually lead to that is um, when the scope to be covered is not um, properly uh, defined. Mm. Now, um, and I would like to find out, is it okay or, or appropriate to actually have a change management plan in the project scope because like they will always say in the local palace that uh, change is something that is constant. Mm. Or are there projects even after defining and uh, having a proper documented uh, project scope, those projects still deviate and go into uh, a creep? Yeah, it's um, just like I said, um that having a, a scope management plan is part of a project um, deliverable because you need to have a plan. It's like a, 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 a risk management plan waiting for any risk to occur. If you don't have a plan for your risk, then it's very risky because the project is all about risk. You are taking a big risk. So, in a, if, if you are working in a, or with a project, you know that there will always a time when some people will come and request for change. Even if people they are not, they are, they are, if nobody comes to request for change, it's equally good to have a change management plan so that when the change comes, it will be easier for you to manage. So answering your question, yes, it's very good to have a plan in place. Like you, if you look at um, uh, what would be say, there's a stage where I say that you must have a plan to manage your scope. A plan means that even if there is no scope creep or there is no request for change, there is a plan already on ground. You have a template. You have a template waiting for it. 
so that whenever it comes, you just pull your plane. This is how you want it to be, uh, be done. You refer your, your if it's, uh, they're selling, add this to this. You say, no, this is not in this scope. If you want me to add this to it, fill this form for me. And when you fill this form for me, I will review it with my team so that you can actually look at the impact of what you are telling me to do. And we'll document the impact so that the management will see the impact of what you're asking me to do. And so if the management is okay with this impact, that is the impact analysis. We are, we are doing, you need to do your impact analysis. So if the management, they are comfortable with the, the, the impact after seeing the, doing the impact analysis, good and fine. It's not your project. You are just a manager working for them. But they say, they, we need this. Even after looking at the impact, that more money will be cost and more time, you take longer time to do. And they say, well, okay. Then you go ahead and add the change within the, the project. So that is, is very proper to have a plan. So I think um, I've uh, answered your question. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. All right. So um, in the absence of any other question, I uh, will um, end this session for tonight. And um, we'll be looking at um, continuing from next week. I uh, will. Like tomorrow is a Saturday and um, Sunday, I think uh, it's better to have a rest and then continue over the weekend. So, I mean, we continue over the weekdays, I say over the weekend, we continue over the weekdays. So I say thank you for participating in tonight's uh, tonight's class and um, have a good night. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah.